What's good, y'all? Hope you're having a good day today, right? I hope, hope everything's going well. I thought I mentioned before going into the main video that we're giving out a 30% discount code for both of my online courses, the Ponziani opening and the Hippopotamus Defense. If you're interested in either of these courses or both, all you got to do is uh, go down to the description below or the pinned comment, plug in the discount code June 2024, and you will receive 30% off of the course or courses that you purchase. Okay. Um, I put a lot of work into both of these courses. Uh, dozens have gotten the Ponziani. Hundreds have gotten the Hippo Defense course. And uh, yeah, many have told me that they enjoyed it. I, I really think that both the Ponziani and the Hippo are, are two of the most underrated options that a chess player can go with um, from either side. Right now, obviously, the Hippo, it's, it's more, uh, you know, white or black. You can do it from either side. The Ponziani is a very E4 based opening. Uh, but the Ponziani has a ton of opening traps, uh, and, and it works. I mean, it's a sound opening, sound option, and many players just don't know what the heck to do with it. So, again, thought I mentioned that. And remember, if you're interested in getting this 30% off sale, you got to get it done uh, and get one of those courses or both uh, before the end of the month. Let's head back to the video. Today's video marks part one of a four-part series, in which case we're going to be covering how to play the pterodactyl defense. Now, as many of you know that have been subscribed to this channel, I'm a big fan of rare off-key, off-beat openings so that we can take our opponent by surprise because they're not going to know what the heck to do with our opening option most of the time, right? If we play something mainstream, mainline, there's nothing wrong with that, but they're probably pretty well prepped. But when we play something that they've hardly ever seen or maybe you have never seen before we're going to have advantage and comfortability and overall awareness and understanding of the opening positions that we reach and i think the pterodactyl falls right into that against the move of d4 okay so we see that move of d4 in this case what are we doing well we're starting out with modern we're playing g6 playing bishop g7 and against this specific setup very common setup by the way from white with d4 and c4 followed by that knight move we're now going to put pressure on move three on white center with striking the c5 option okay so here it's only move three white already with a big decision to make we have a pawn and a bishop blasting down on that d4 pawn and i'm, I'm you know i'm kind of breaking this up into a four-part series uh to make these digestible for you guys and to just focus on one move at a time okay here in part one we're going to be looking at what happens if white takes part two we're going to be looking at e3 part three Knight f3, and finally part four, the most popular move from white in online chess, the move of d5. Now, if we look at the stats, white taking this pawn, it's not that common. Okay, usually white isn't going to take that, but we should still know what to do against it, right? In fact, and really any opening, right, if we're offering our opponent a pawn, even if the stats show that they don't usually take it, that's really the first thing that we need to figure out. What if they take the pawn that we just offered? In this case, I'm recommending taking that knight on c3 immediately, okay, uh, and, and really trying to damage white's pawn structure. Going back, a move like knight a6, this pawn is weak, right? It's doubled. It's on our side of the board. But here, white can play a move like queen c2, just giving us the pawn back, and their structure actually looks pretty okay, right? Their pawn structure is fine. If we see a move like e4, if we take on c3, look, the, the queen doesn't have to stay here. Right? It's not like the queen has to keep an eye on e4 because if we do win that pawn, we lose our rook. That's not good. Okay. And in and, and the same kind of view, a move like queen a5, bishop d2, now there's a piece defending c3, not just a pawn. And the moment that we take it, I mean, all of a sudden we're forked. Right, Our queen's attack, the second we run away with it, we lose our rook. We're losing. So going back, if you do play the pterodactyl, if you play the modern, play c5 and white captures, you got to take that knight off immediately. That's my recommendation, at least. Okay. And what you get here is white uh, <laughs> having eight pawns with half of them being isolated. We have an isolated pawn on a2 and triple isolated pawns on the c file. What does this mean? Well, they're isolated because there's no pawns, right? If we look at the, the files next to those pawns, there, there's no pawns that can defend these. There's no pawn that can defend a2. These pawns are by themselves. The only thing that can ever defend them is a minor or major piece or their king. But a pawn cannot defend a pawn when we look at the queen side of the board. And pawns are great defenders because they're expendable, right? Now, uh, on top of that, they're not just isolated. We have triple isolated pawns. So double, doubled pawns, tripled pawns are known for not being able to 
to defend each other and on top of that they're isolated so these two pawns in particular are very easy for us to access with the move of queen a5 right attacking both of those now c4 is going to come later on but right away we're threatening two of these pawns now the most popular move online is queen d4 we're going to go over that is that a good move no it's not okay in fact if you look at online chess there's mistakes all the time against the pterodactyl because people don't know what the heck to do with it because it's so rare but it is sound okay it is a sound op uh you know a sound option for black and uh yeah i'm a big fan of it so we play queen a5 right now we're going to be looking at the move of queen d4 really the only move that defends both but what if we do see a move like bishop d2? Okay, I'm going to recommend not taking on c5 right away because then white can play a move like e4. We're still better here. But white does get some nice central control. So why not play the move of knight f6 first, prevent e4, and then look to take on c5? Right, when we play knight f6, the only way that you can defend c5 is by bringing your bishop to e3. That's the only way to do it. And the moment that you do that, we take the pawn on c3 with check against your king. So, I mean, I mean, you know, triple isolated pawns. This is just a big issue for white. There's no easy fix here. And you can play a move like f3 or queen c2 so that when we do take on c5, you can play e4. But at least white has to work for it a little bit. They have to play a weird move like f3 to prep e4. They have to play a move like queen c2, which they probably weren't going to play in order to pull off that e4 move. Let's make them earn their center position a little bit and make their piece placement awkward while doing it. And again, if a move like knight f3, we can take... Um, Something like e3, this happens all the time if you look at the stats online. Notice just how bad this bishop is on d2. I mean, that's just a sad bishop. Uh, it's just sad to look at. If you're white, if you're black, it's it's not that bad to look at. But we can now play a move like b6, right? And look to Fien Keto, our bishop on b7. Okay, I'm a big fan of this. I'm also a fan of bishop a6, just doubling down on that pawn. Notice we're, we're, in, we're at even material right now, guys. We're at even material. And c4, uh, we already have two attackers on it. If you defend it... We could start looking at something like getting that knight to a5, right? Knight c6, knight a5, and putting even more pressure on that pawn. Maybe rook c8 at some point. One of the rooks coming over to c8 to put pressure on that pawn. There's no pawn that can defend c4. And because of that, white's going to have to keep adding more and more pieces to defend it. But pawns are better defenders than pieces because, again, they're expendable. Going back to queen a5, um, <clears throat> if something like... Queen b3, again, same kind of idea, right? We could take right away, but why not play knight f6 first? Just prevent e4 and then look to take on c5, okay? If something like knight f3, we could take with the queen, but I actually like knight a6. Just just a nice option because now when we take with a knight, we get tempo against the enemy queen, so that, that's pretty nice. Um, it is worth mentioning this move of queen b4, guys. Don't take. Don't take this queen because then you're just fixing white's pawn structure. You're making their game easy. Drop the queen back. Next move, get tempo on that queen, forking the queen and the pawn. Um, and here white's got to play something weird. They got to play queen a3, queen b2, queen b1, something kind of weird and awkward. Because if they go back to the normal square of b3, we get another tempo against that queen. So when we see the move of queen a5, uh, even with the options that I showed you, black has a good game. Queen d4 is the most popular move here. And against that, we're going to play knight f6. Now, uh, again, the most popular move online is bishop g2. I do want to cover this move of bishop g5 real quick, though. Uh, this might seem scary. It might seem like white is crashing down on this knight and we're in tons of trouble. All you got to do is play knight c6. Okay, the, the queen cannot keep pressure on this knight. If the queen comes to f4 or h4, continuing to pounce down on that minor piece, they're leaving behind c3. This queen has to keep an eye on c3. If we see something like, let's just say, queen d2, knight e4 nasty fork from black bishop queen three pawns i mean octopus knight here just attacking pretty much everything that white has moved uh the only the only thing that this knight is not attacking right now is the pawn on c4 right um that that has moved for white in this game so you know i mean if the queen moves okay let's take the bishop we're, we're now just up a piece of our pawn and you have triple isolated pawns and an isolated pawn and if you take our knight take on c3 throw in a check take the rook um, you could take on a2. I think the engine likes this. I, I would probably just take the queen off, play b6, offer a trade. I mean, if you don't want to trade, I'll just take your pawn. And if you do trade, I'll take back. I'm going to win your pawn on a2. Everything's normal here, right? For the most part, same amount of pawns, same amount of pieces, minor pieces that is. But if we look at major pieces, we have two rooks. They have one resignable for white. 
Going back, if we see a move like queen e3, which is a much better move than queen d2, right? Because we don't get tempo uh, on that queen. We could play knight g4. We, we could also just bring the knight to e4 anyways, right? I mean, if you take on e4, we throw in a check. We're going to say thank you for the rook. We're completely winning. So you can't even take that knight, and we're, we're attacking so much on the board right now. If a move like rook c1, we can take on g5 and actually play d6, right? You're, you're unable to take because that pawn is pinned to the queen. And if you develop your knight, okay, let's take on c5, um, offer a trade. And look, if, if we trade into an endgame here, I'm taking black any day of the week. Again, isolated pawns are so difficult, especially in the endgame. These pawns cannot defend each other, guys. They just can't. Right, if we play a move like bishop e6, if we play a move like knight a5, white's going to have to start scrambling with their pieces, trying to defend everything. Us, on the other hand, if if white ever does attack our pawn on c5, okay, b6. We're chilling. Okay. On top of that, we as black have more leverage to make pawn breaks. White, on the other hand, I don't, I just don't know what they're going to do with those pawns. So, yeah, I mean that covers the move of, of bishop g5. If you see that, just kick that queen around. White cannot keep an eye on that knight without giving up c3 and if the queen goes to e3 or d2 after that knight e4 keep the pressure keep it churning and a good game for black i also want to mention this move of e4 in this case don't take on e4 please okay because it might seem like okay if they take on e4 we take on c3 we're winning that is true but they have vision on our rook and we're getting checkmated at move eight so don't do that okay instead of taking on e4 right away they do have vision on our rook attack the queen and then look to take on e4 notice the queen can't keep an eye on that rook okay if you keep the queen there thanks to the queen if you move it here thanks to the queen if you take the knight thanks for the queen i keep saying thanks for the queen but i mean if you want to save your queen you got to get out of there and the moment that you do now we can take on e4 obviously a queen doesn't move like that and uh yeah we have a ton of pressure on both of these pawns uh by both our knight and our queen on a5 and if you take the knight now okay check we're good right once the king moves thanks to the rook and we are winning this. Going back, if we look at bishop d2, knight a6. Knight a6 is a key option, right? Now, we, we all, we've all heard, you know, the knight on the rim is dim, all that kind of stuff. And that's true. The knight on the edge of the board doesn't attack as many squares, but this knight is coming here for a purpose, right? We, we're eyeing this pawn on c5. And once that knight gets there, I mean, that is a, a rock-solid knight, unable to get kicked around by enemy pawns. Um if something like bishop e3, white trying to defend that 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 pawn, I mean, we could still take. You can't really take back because we just take on c3 with check, right? Again, we're going to win your rook, okay? So white really needs to be careful about that c3 pawn, right? You don't want to defend uh, c5 so much that you just drop your c3 pawn and you lose your rook. And uh, if you don't defend it, okay, well, we'll take with the knight. That's fine. Okay, e3 is played uh, online. This is the most popular move that we see online. And oftentimes, black misses the following move. They miss this move of knight b3. Amazing tactical idea. Um, you know, I mean, yeah. I mean, if you move the queen, thanks to the rook. If you take the knight, we take the rook. We're up the exchange here. We now play a move like d6. Notice we have very nice control over both dark and light squares. Um, white's pawn structure is a little bit better than it was. Uh, you don't have triple isolated pawns anymore, or really any isolated pawns, but we are up the exchange and you do have a king on E2. So yeah, that's obviously uh, not a ton of fun. Okay. So again, uh, you know, when, when we think about the pterodactyl, right, when we think about it, we got, we got to remember we're playing C5 and if white captures that pawn, we got to take on C3 immediately, play queen A5 and go from there. Okay, and remember, those pawns are so weak, you, you don't necessarily need to play a move like queen takes c5 right away. Play queen a5, develop your pieces, capture a pawn off at the right moment, and there's so many ways that your opponent can fall into trouble there. I'll see y'all over in part two, and and, and just, just remember again, guys, um, you know, I... Uh, when it comes to openings like this, part of the reason I'm such a big fan, it's not just because the pterodactyl is a good opening, right? Now, there's plenty of openings that are rare that are bad. For example, the Coca-Cola Gambit. The Coca-Cola drink is bad for you, and so is the chess opening. It's bad for your chess game as well. But I'm not sitting here recommending that because the opening sucks. Okay, it's just terrible. It is so bad. Okay, I mean, just look it up. The Coca-Cola Gambit, it's it's... It's, it's hard to look at, all right? But something like the pterodactyl, I mean, this is an underrated option at the end of the day, and a lot of white players just don't know what the heck to do with it. So hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you over on part two, and um, yeah, wishing you all a great day. Let's get it. What's up, y'all?
Solomon here. I hope you enjoyed this video. I uh, appreciate y'all a ton. And if you haven't subscribed before, uh, you know, just a, a quick reminder, uh, you know, to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and uh, hit that bell as well. If you're if you're wanting more content like this to help you improve in your game and all that kind of stuff. And uh, real quickly as well, I wanted to give a quick shout out to my Patreon uh, supporters for the month of June in 2024. I appreciate y'all a ton. You guys are helping me do this full time. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you haven't checked it out before, I highly recommend that you go check out some of the benefits that you gain by becoming a member. And I will see y'all in the next one. Peace. Peace.